Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. I'm Coretta and today we will be making Hershey Purse Party Favors using cardstock design in Cricut Design Space. The supplies you will need to complete this project would be color cardstock of your choice. And here I have some white, some yellow, some black, and some pink foil. I'm gonna be using the white cardstock for printing. You can also use glossy paper to print on, but um, today I'm gonna to use the white cardstock. You need beads for your straps, and these beads are um, pearl beads in five millimeter in size. You need magnets. These magnets are 1 mm. You can do 1 mm or you can do 2 mm. I got these from Amazon. You need Velcro. The Velcro I got from, from Walmart. Embellishments I got from Amazon. Crafting glue of your choice. Here I'm using Andrina's Creations crafting glue. And then I have the Sissic Big Shot. I got this from Michaels and I have the embossing folder and I got it from Amazon. To make the Hershey purse, the first thing you'll need to do is go to andrinascreation.com to purchase the template and download it to your computer. The file is gonna download as a zip file you will need to unzip the file in order to upload it into Cricut Design Space. Once you've unzipped the file folder, you will see that there are three files within the folder. The first file is the PDF measurements. The second file is the SVG file. And the third file is the Silhouette Studio file. For the tutorial, we will be using the PDF measurement file and the layers file. The PDF measurement file has all the measurements for using and sizing your template in order to make the Hershey purse, um, the Hershey purse walk, the Hershey, I'm sorry, the, the layered Hershey purse. So let's upload this into Cricut. So to upload it into Cricut Design Space, you will click Upload, Upload Image, Browse. You will find the file that you're looking for. And here you will find the Hershey Purse SVG. Click OK. And then you will upload it into Cricut. You will select the image and then add it to your canvas. The template will upload into design space, but not in the size that you need to create the purse. Here, you will need to reference the measurement PDF file to properly size your cut files. So you can print it out for reference, or you can open the PDF file and flip back and forth between the windows. For the purpose of this tutorial, I am going to upload a PNG of the measurements so that I don't have to flip back and forth between the two windows. So I'm just gonna add the file to the design space so that I can see it. And you all can see as I am sizing it up to the correct measurements. So I'm gonna leave it over here in this corner. So as you can see, we have some files with dotted lines on it. These are score lines. Cricut will cut these lines as perforated lines so that you can fold the cardstock. So in order to cut the file and the score lines, we must attach the score lines to the cut file. And to do that, we would ungroup the cut files. We would select each individual file by themselves and then we would hit attach we would do that for all of the files with score lines on them so 
So all the score lines have been attached. Now we need to size them according to the um, instructions. Remember when sizing your files that you should leave the proportion of the, you should leave the proportions locked. That way it'll size proportionally, okay? So the first piece is this large green piece here, which is the base. And it should be sized at 7.897 in width and 9.533 in height. So we're going to size and proportionally it sized to 9.533 like the instruction said. So I'm gonna move that out of the way then we're going to grab this small piece here so you have these two small pieces here which are a part of the main piece and they each should be sized at 1.886 in width and 3.025 in height so we're going to size this to 1886 and hit enter and however when we hit 1.886 it didn't size to the proper height so we're going to unlock the proportion and then we're going to size it to the correct height of 3.025, enter. And so now we have this at the right height and we're gonna lock it back and move it out of the way. Then we're gonna grab this other small piece and we're gonna size it to 1.886 and then we're gonna unlock it like we did the other one and size it to the correct height. And then we're going to lock it back. And then we're going to move it out of the way. So because the height didn't automatically size based on the width, we had to change it to the 3.025. So when you're resizing it, you have to make sure that it's resizing to the correct size. And for those files that don't, then you will just manually adjust it. So here we have the pink files here. The pink file is the first layer. These pieces can be used, can be cut using metallic cardstock, glitter cardstock, or any color cardstock that you like. According to the instructions, these top two pieces right here should be 7.649 in width and 2.774 in height. So we're going to size this according to the instructions, 7.649. And the width automatically went to 2.774. And we're going to move that out of the way. We're going to select the other piece and we're going to size that to 7.649. And it automatically sized to 2.774. And we're going to move that out of the way. This thin piece right here, should be sized to 6.727 in width and 0 0.382 in height. So we're gonna size this to 6.727 and it automatically sized to 0 0.382. We're gonna move that out of the way. <clears throat> then you have this bottom piece here that should be sized at 6.859 in width and 2.390 in height. And so we're going to size that. And it automatically sized to 2.39. And then you have these two small pieces over here. And they each should be sized at 0 0.273 in width and 2.805 in height. and it automatically sized to the correct height. And then we move that, and then this one as well. So you have 0 0.273, and it sized to the right height. The purple pieces are the second layer. These pieces can be used. Um, you can cut these pieces out using decorative cardstock, or you can emboss with an uh, embossing machine using a color cardstock of your choice. So the top two pieces here should be sized at 7.359 in height, I mean in width, and 2.497 in 
width. So we're gonna give it just that tad bit. So we're gonna manually adjust it and then lock it back because it didn't quite size correctly. And then you're going to size this the same, 7.359 in width and 2.497 in height. And I'm gonna lock it back because you have to manually do that one. This small piece right here should be 6. 6.617 in width and 0 0.274 in height. And we're going to move that. And this piece here should be sized at 6.590 in width and 2.12 in height. If you don't have an embossing machine or decorative cardstock, you can add your own decorative background to your design. And these pieces here are the pieces that you would decorate. The purple pieces here are the pieces that you would decorate. Zoom out. And I'm missing a little piece. This piece right here. So these are the pieces that you would um, decorate right here. So in order to decorate these pieces right here, you're going to, you can add a um decorative background and you could get your decorative background from any place that you purchase your images from so to change the um to add a decorative background you should select the purple layer and we're going to duplicate it because for the purpose of this tutorial i will be doing um, I'll be showing you two five, two different types of purses. So we're just going to move this out of the way. We've sized our, we've sized our purse according to the instructions. So I'm just going to hide it. And then we're going to work with these files here to add decorative background to them. To add a decorative background, you can search Google, you can go to Etsy or wherever you like to purchase your designs from and save them to your computer. So in order to add a decorative background, you would need to select the layer and change it from a basic cut to a print then cut. Select the color box and change it, the print type, to pattern. Here you'll see that Cricut has preloaded patterns that you can use, but you can also use your own patterns that you uploaded yourself. So here you'll see Cricut preloaded as well as my, my loaded patterns. So to load your own pattern, you would need to go to upload, Select Pattern Fill, Upload Pattern, Browse to where you want to get your pattern from, and select the pattern that you want. Hit Open, and hit Upload. Here, the pattern automatically went to the pattern images you won't see it in your recently uploaded. So then you will hit upload again, select your shape again, go to the color and change it, print type to pattern, find your pattern and select it. So once you upload your pattern, I mean, select your pattern, you can edit your pattern. And here you want to 
you you are able to scale your pattern up or down whatever you like you can change it with the you can change it as well so you can change it to whatever you like and then you can um you can move it horizontal or vertically you can rotate it or you can flip it horizontally or vertical as well and when you're finished you just hit the x button and then you would do that for all of your patterns all of the the files that you want to change to pattern This little piece right here, we're just going to change it to um, a color so that because it's so thin, well, no, let's try to add a, um, we're going to try to add a pattern to it and see what it looks like. I don't like how it looks. So I'm going to just turn this to back to a color and I'm gonna turn it red. I'm just gonna leave it red. So after you've add your pattern, you can now add your design elements. And so I'm gonna add my design elements to the front, to the front flap of the purse. And to do that, I'm just gonna add my images and then design my front flap. So I'm going to go to upload images and I'm going to grab the images that I want and upload them into design space. And I've already um, removed the background on them by using remove BG. And you can go to remove BG.com to remove backgrounds versus using the Cricut um, tool to do so. So I've added all of my images that I wanna use. I have one more. And then I'm going to select all of my images and I'm going to add them to the canvas. And then I'll start designing.
And here I'm just adding an offset to the image. I'm gonna change this offset to red. Where'd it go? Okay, let's try that again. I'm gonna put the offset at 0 0.50, I mean 60. Okay, Cricut's moving slow. Come on. I'm going to change this to red and then I'm going to add an offset to this the same offset and I'm going to change that to yellow and then I'm going to group them together and then I'm going to size them down to where I want them to be and then place them actually let's ungroup that because this top one right here I want it to be black black and regroup regroup and then put it back let's see let's zoom in so we can see if you get the if I get the effect that I'm looking for I can kind of see it a little bit And once you finish designing, you would group it, you would select everything and flatten it. And that way Cricut will cut just the shape. And then you can send it to Matt to be cut. Okay, so I've cut everything out. And here I have two versions of the purse that I've cut out. And I'm gonna show you how to put them together. The first version is the print and cut version. And the second version is the embossing version with a magnetic closure. So I'm going to show you how to put these together. I'm going to move this one out of the way. And we're going to do the print and cut one first. The first thing you need to do is you need to fold all of your pieces on the perforated lines. So you're just gonna fold them on the perforated lines like that. And then once you fold them on the perforated lines, you're gonna take these two small base pieces and you're gonna put them like so. You're gonna glue them right here, making sure that they are flushed with the purse. Once you have your base pieces glued together, then you're gonna turn it over and you're gonna glue your first layer to your purse. And you would glue the first layer like this. So this layer would go here, this layer would go here, this layer would go right here, and this layer would go here. And then you have these two small pieces right here. They would go here. So you would glue them down like that. Once you have your first layer glued down, then you would glue your second layer down like so. Now we have all of the layers glued to our base layer and 
You want to make sure that when you're gluing your layers to your base, that you're gluing it while your base is flat. That way you don't crush any of the pieces um, to the purse that are going to be forming the box shape for your purse. So once all these layers are glued, then you would turn it over and you would um, fold in the side pieces like so. So it'll form the box for the Hershey bar. And you want to make sure that when you fold in this second piece, that you are folding it in so that this piece is flush with the corner of the top of the side piece. And you want to do that for both sides of the purse. You want to make sure that it's flush just like that. And then you glue the other side the exact same way. So I don't know if you can see that. Let me see. Like that. Okay, the purse has been assembled. We've glued all the layers on. We've glued the side. Making sure that the sides are flush with the, with the top of the purse all the way around and so the next thing we need to do is we need to add the velcro the closure which we're going to use a velcro closure and we're going to add our straps so to do so you would choose the straps that you want to use and here we're going to use this beaded pearl strap here and then we're going to take the strap and we're gonna take one of these beads and punch it through the hole like that. And then we're gonna do it on this side as well. And you can make the length of your, 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 your strand as long as you would like for it to be. That's up to you. You decide how long you want it to be. And then we will add the Velcro closure. And here, I'm going to add the Velcro closure. And I always add like a dab of glue on, one, on the Velcro closure so that um, it can adhere to the purse. So I'm going to put the Velcro closure right here, like so. So it's there. And then I'm going to put a little glue on this side as well. And then I'm going to close the purse like that. So now we're finished the first one and we're going to assemble the second one. The second one is assembled in the same way as the first one, except for we're going to use magnetic closures. And so there's like one little small difference when you assemble it with the magnet closure. So I'm going to assemble it now and show you how that's done. So for the second purse, we have the base of the purse assembled and we wanna add a magnetic closure to the purse. So what we're gonna do is before we add any layers, we're gonna add our first magnet. And to add our first magnet, you just get a magnet and add some glue and you sit the magnet right at the end of the flat, front flap of the purse. Like so. And then you after you add that magnet, then you can add your, your other layers. So we have our first layer attached to the base, as you can see. And we took the first layer and we covered up the magnet here. Um, so... Now the next step would be to emboss our next layer. And I'm gonna show you how I would emboss these layers. Okay, so here we have our emboss machine and our embossing folder. And to emboss this layer here, you would um, get your embossing folder and your layer and you would add it to your purse, making sure that you kind of line it up so that it's straight and you would put it in the folder. You would put the folder inside 
of the fold the embossing plates like so and then you would run it through the embossing fold and through the embossing machine now let me back up a little bit you have some of the um you have some of the the layer hanging off so when you run it through the embossing machine you don't want to run it all the way through because you'll leave an impression of this edge of the folder on your cardstock so you only want to run it so that it only runs halfway through so we're going to sit it back down here put it on the put the plates back on top of it and then we're going to run it through but again remember you're only going to run it halfway through because you don't want it to um you don't want it to leave that line so then you just run it back through and then take it out and then you once you take it out then you move it over so that you can emboss the next side and when you move it over you want it to, you want to line it up with the design so that you can get um so that it doesn't you want to line it up so that you get the same impression and the impression is uniform all the way across so once you line it up put it back on the plate and then run it through again only running it halfway through because you don't want to get that line on your um on your car stock so you only want to run it halfway through and see i didn't run it all the way through so the impression did not come all the way through so we're going to try to work on it to get to get this perfect again so again we have our next piece on the machine and we've lined it up in our folder and we're just going to run it through the machine again and then we're going to run it back we're going to take it off again lining it up so we can make sure that we get the impression even on both sides lining it up making sure that the impression lines up with what you already have putting it down putting a plate on top of it and then running it through And you would do that for each layer each layer you would run it through to make sure that you got the impression on all of we have all of our pieces embossed and so we want to add the second layer which are the embossed layers to the purse so we're going to add this layer to the purse and we're going to add this layer to the purse and we're going to add this layer to the purse like so here we have three of the four layers added to the base of the purse we didn't add this piece yet because we want to add a magnet to go with this magnetic closure and in order to do so you would need to get a magnet turn it over and add the magnet here then you would close the purse up without gluing it just close it up ensuring that it is closed as close to 
how you would glue it down. So you want to make sure it's like that. Glo um, pull together. Then you would take a dab of glue and you would put a dab of glue on the back of the magnet, like so, where the glue is right there. Put it on the back on the magnet, and then you would close the purse. And you do this because you want to see where you should be placing the, your second magnet. And so it will leave a dot of glue on your purse, on the front side of your purse. So then you would take this magnet off and flip it over and put it glue to glue right here. And once you put that right there, then you would add your layer to your purse. Once the layer is added, you can see that now you have a magnetic closure on your purse. So it, it just closes with the magnet as so. And then you proceed to close the box, the purse, the same way by ensuring that the side pieces are flush with the top of the purse the front flap and the sides are flush with the front flap as well. So here we are, we have all of the purses assembled and we have our print and cut and then we have our embossed layer here. You can see like the embossed design on it here. And then I added the embellishment that I got from Amazon and I used hot glue to glue that down. So. That's how we make Hershey purses. Okay, guys, we're all finished. Here's the final product. These Hershey purses can be used as party favors for all occasions. These came out really cute. I enjoy making them. Hopefully, you were able to follow along with my process so that you can make them too. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll respond back. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.